as every farmer knows, efficiency is an important equation that you can't ignore. But I think there are a lot of uh, misconceptions about uh, efficiency. We have this notion somehow that the bigger you get, the more efficient you become. That there's that almost locked in relationship. And so if you aren't gonna get bigger, you're gonna be less efficient and therefore you're not gonna survive. Something that's efficient has little wasted motion and produces an outcome with a minimal effort. The, the goal of that is to conserve energy and avoid waste. But the efficiencies that are gained in the economic system, especially in the food system, have the reverse effect. There have been some interesting studies done, and, and uh, Mike Duffy, um, who is a friend of mine who's an ag economist at Iowa State University, in fact, did a study uh, looking at real farms in Iowa uh, on, on, this, on this question of, you know, do farms get more efficient as they get bigger? What he discovered was that, sure, you get more efficient up to a certain point by getting bigger, but then you reach that point and there aren't any more efficiencies to be gained. In fact, in some instances, you start to lose some efficiencies. And in Iowa in 2006, a typical corn soybean farm reaches its peak efficiency at somewhere between 600 and 900 acres. Now, in Iowa, that's considered like a typical family farm size. After that, getting, getting bigger than that, there are no more efficiencies to be gained. And I started to think about, you know, some of my friends who farm, who now are farming 25,000 acres. Well, you figure at that rate, you ought to really be efficient, right? but at least one quarter section of one of my friends who farms 25,000 acres is 100 miles from the farm. It takes a lot more energy and time, et cetera, to plant and harvest that quarter section than the one that's next to the farmstead. So you start to lose efficiencies as you get larger. The problem is not technology, it's our use and our philosophy of technology. That there is no limits to what we can do. So if we have a problem, we will just apply technology and overcome that problem. One of my favorite lines from the movie Jurassic Park is from that biologist, Jeff Goldblum's character. And he says, you know, we were so busy uh, trying to see if we could that we didn't stop to bother and see if we should. Economic efficiency can measure cost benefits in economic terms, but some of the costs and benefits that we have to consider are not economic and they can't be quantified. For example, how do you know if somebody is happy? Okay, how do you measure that in quantifiable terms? How do you measure the value of the work that earthworms do in the soil? What is the economic value of the beauty of a native prairie? Okay. We can't put these things into an accounting ledger, tally it up and say, we have economically uh, achieved this in the most efficient way possible because it can't measure that for us. There's no tool to do that. And I think the new model is, is that we need to look at human beings and the earth we live on as a biological model rather than a mechanical or economic model. And we behave more like animals and plants than we do like machines. Where we're at right now is 75% of our total food and agriculture is being produced by just 195,442 farms in this country. And 30% of those farmers are over age 65 and only 5% are under age 35. How much longer can we go in that direction and still have the human resources to be able to produce the food that we need? And so I think that the fact that each farmer feeds 145 people is a statement of great concern, not a statement of heroic achievement anymore. In America right now, 2% of Americans make their living by farming. So that means that 98% of Americans are in the consumer end of the equation on this one. We factor into that that of that 2% that are earning their living by farming, many of them are producing inedible goods. They're making, producing cotton, 
for fabric, they're tobacco farmers, they're growing corn for ethanol. Okay, so we can't even eat that stuff. So we've got a very small sector actually producing and a large sector looking for their next fix. And I worry over that, that if we don't get more people understanding and participating in the producing end of this equation, that one of these days we'll go to the supermarket and there's not going to be something for our next fix. And then what are we going to do? I, th I think it's important for us as we think about food and agriculture that the kind of farming that we do, the kind of food system that we have, has a direct effect on the kind of communities that we're going to have. So what's happened is we do have some of the smaller farms, maybe the 80, 160 acre farms that are being absorbed by the neighbor who has to grow a little bit more just to uh, be competitive, to stay in business. And we don't have as many people in a community. How that affects agriculture is we may be able to buy goods from other communities, larger communities, maybe from a larger distributor of certain products that we'll need for the farm. But services are affected. You may live in Wells County and do business in Jamestown, in Stutzman County, but the reality is if you need services such as uh, tires being changed, maybe you need an agronomist, there's multiple services that are required and needed by agriculture that if they're not in your hometown, they're not in your community, you're not going to be able to get that service adequately, effectively, or even efficiently and timely. That's a problem. So if we think about the economic efficiency of uh, two farmers farming the same amount of land uh, with that 30 farmers used to be able to farm. It's more economically efficient if two guys and two tractors can do th that job instead of 30 guys doing that job. So on a strict balance scale, okay, just costs, inputs, and output, we say that is definitely more economically efficient. The problem is that we didn't ask what the goal was. Okay, the goal was never economic efficiency. The goal was uh, things that matter to people. And when people are asked about what, you, what is it that you really love or value about life, they don't say economic efficiency. They say things like, I want to be able to put my kids through college. I want them to have a better life than I had. I want to be able to get together with my neighbors and live in a safe community. You know, I want my kids to be able to go to a good public school. So what is the implications of just having two farmers where there was once 30? Suddenly your kid has to travel 60 miles round trip to get to a town that has a school anymore. You've lost 30 families in your community. So now the businesses like the hardware store, the restaurants now aren't economically viable anymore. And even to take it out of economic terms, I would ask you to ask those two farmers, are they happy? You know, are they happy farming that way? Are they getting to call the shot, so to speak, in their own operation? So these are things that we don't often measure by economic efficiency, and we can't measure. But we need to keep those values and goals front and center and keep economic efficiency in its place. I actually don't think that we should jettison economic efficiency as a measuring tool. The important part is to let each operation of scale set goals and values that are appropriate to them. So you articulate those goals and your values. And I don't care how big or small your operation is, that's where you should start. And then put economic efficiency where it belongs, which is a means, one of the means of achieving those ends. Efficiency isn't a measure of happiness. It, it's, it may be a, a measure of the opposite of happiness. So I think what we need to become, rather than talking about efficient food systems, is we should talk about food systems that make us happy. And, and raising a garden and sharing your produce with your neighbor makes me happy. And having a food system that produces local nutritionist food that I can buy, still affordable prices, makes a lot of people happy. So I, that would be my advice to people, is get off the word efficient and talk about systems 
that make us happy and, and healthy.